Hello, and welcome to this short film of the making of the Jaws 2 traditional illustration. I had previously created the poster digitally in Photoshop, however I wanted to recreate it in the traditional medium. This is because I wanted to capture that traditional feeling you don't quite get with digital work. To date there have been a variety of different art posters created for Jaws and Jaws 2 as you can see here. I wanted to create a poster that was closer to the original poster by Roger Castell. Due to its simplistic yet powerful design, to anyone who has seen Roger's Jaws poster, it is the quintessential movie poster for the franchise. I felt that the poster for the second film should almost be a direct reflection of the first, with the exception of a little motif to show it is for the second film. Let's get started on making this poster. Okay, so uh, we started out uh, by gessoing a sheet of MDF board. So you really need to plan a day ahead and get your gesso on the board and give it time to cure. The good thing about using it is you can uh, put in a lot of good textures in there which, you know, give you a little bit of extra detail and stuff like that in the illustration that you would otherwise have to try and draw in with a pencil which would take you forever. You can see that there is actually a grid on the board and the reason for that being is because I was translating my digital painting into a traditional medium. So I did want to get it to scale and have something to go by while I was redrawing it which uh, really helps speed up the process rather than trying to measure it by eye and guesstimate it. It just speeds up the overall drawing process. So you will see here that uh, I'm just filling in some blacks with a pencil. Just, I just use the pencil as a rough guide as to where I'm going to go with the paint. It's not, you know, a hundred percent, you know, totally finished drawing or rendering uh, because, you know, there's no point in rendering everything in pencil because you're just going to cover it with paint. So that's basically what I'm doing. I'm just penciling enough of the illustration to the point where I feel comfortable that I can attack it with the airbrush and fill in the darks and the lights and have a guide just to when I'm using the airbrush. As for a pencil, I'm just using a 2B lead in a standard clutch holder pencil. So there's not a lot to this illustration, it's just the shark and the divers. So I did the whole painting in around about three and a half hours. So it's not a lot of time for something as simple as this. Most of this will actually get covered up uh, when I airbrush over the top, but I'll still be able to see most of the pencil work underneath and use it as a guide for when I'm filling it in with paint. Now that I've actually got the penciling down, I'm now basically filling in my darkest darks with an acrylic wash of black acrylic. Uh, the reason why I do that is I don't want to use a pure black um, finish for it because I want to still give myself room to move later on in the actual illustration. So by applying just a black acrylic wash it gives me more of a guide as to where my darkest darks are going to be. So basically brushing it in, trying to be careful as much as possible. So you can see that I'd already done uh, the divers and I'm just going over again to make them a little bit darker. So once I've basically brushed in the areas which are sort of definitively black and need sort of relatively hard edges that you can get with a brush, then I go back in with the airbrush. Now inside the airbrush, I'm not actually using black paint, I'm actually using what's called shading gray. Okay, so it's a fairly dark gray it's actually kind of a warm gray when I've looked at it closely, but you know, it's not a pure black. You'd want to avoid pure black as much as possible. So I'm just here shading in the dark spots. You can see in the top left hand corner, that was actually a photo I took with my phone of me working on the digital version quite a few months ago. So I'm just using the black and whites from that illustration as a guide. Now you can see here I'm actually airbrushing in the dark patches in the water. Uh, for all you technical people it's called inversion layers. Okay, So once again you can see I'm just very very quickly airbrushing in my darks. Okay, 
Uh, you can see I did some lines there just to indicate uh, the wake on the snout of the shark. Okay, so it's all fairly loose. It's just a, getting the generalized tonality down. Okay, so that's the most important part is getting the tonal values right in the illustration. Using an airbrush to fill in large areas and have it completely opaque is actually a pain in the butt and takes a long time. So all I did was just with some white gouache paint is was just apply a quick wash where I want it to be pure white. And then afterwards I can go over the top of the airbrush and that pretty much gives me a complete opaque white and it really saves on time. You can see I'm just working in the uh, highlights or the lighter areas on the shark. You'll notice that I don't do any really complicated masking or use any complicated friskets and that the reason being is I really hate masking. So generally I'll just pick up a piece of paper most of the time wherever I need an edge and I'll just airbrush in and then remove it later. So now basically I'm adding the color to the piece as it's fairly I guess you could say monochromatic for most of the piece it's just one color. I've basically mixed up my blue which I thought was pretty much about right and I'm just basically airbrushing the color over the top. I'm not filling it in so it's completely opaque because I want to see what's underneath. Okay so basically the way I airbrush it so that the darks underneath will tone the painting and I can still see the painting underneath and then I can still keep working the illustration from there. So you will notice that uh, I'm kind of all over the place with the airbrushing. It's because I, I want to not have a consistent color, okay? We all know what it's like to put your head underwater. You'll notice things aren't completely uniform in color. You, you get dark spots, light spots. So that's what I'm trying to do by not keeping the airbrushing uniform. So now, basically, I'm going back in over the top of what I've done with some more black acrylic wash. So to put the darks back to, you know, a darker value to where I want them to be. Most of the time spent in uh, creating this was actually waiting for paint to dry, which is, I guess, one of the disadvantages of working traditionally versus digitally. So now you'll see, basically, I'm going back in with some white uh, airbrushing to do highlights on the shark. You'll see I've done some masking here. It's not really masking. Basically, all I did was loosely trace out the shark uh, using some tracing paper. And just stick it over the top and use that to mask off an area. As you see, I'll pick up any piece of paper. I don't cut masks to particular shape because unless I really, really have to because I really hate masking. So if I find a piece of paper or tracing paper that's got a bit of a curve on it and I need to airbrush a curve, that's what I'll use. I try to make the whole process as easy as possible. So now I'm going back in and I'm adding some more shading. So I'm just darking up the area around the mouth of the shark. All this time I'm basically just using my original digital illustration as reference. So now that um, I've pretty much done most of the airbrushing, I'd say it's probably around about 80 to 90% of the airbrushing is done. Uh, I'm going in now with Prismacolor Pencil to add highlights and sharpen up the illustration. So you can see as I was drawing along the snout of the shark, you get that sharp highlight line which you're after. Prismacolor Pencil is not 100% opaque. So if I'm drawing with a white pencil, I'm not exactly getting a white line. It's kind of a bluish white line. If I want a completely opaque white line, then that's when I'll break out some white acrylic paint and a brush or go back in with the airbrush and keep airbrushing until it's completely white. Here you can see I'm actually going with the black Prismacolor pencil. This is the reason why I don't put down a pure black when I'm doing my black spots or painting in my darks because 
the Prismacolor pencil is actually quite black in itself. So that's what I use uh, to put in the darkest, absolute darks. I mean, if I had to go really dark, I guess I'd use some black acrylic paint. But the Prismacolor pencil is quite dark. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to add black, but add black texture to the piece, which is what you want. You, you know, paint is fantastic, but unless you're airbrushing, uh, just laying in paint is fairly flat. So you want to try and give your illustration some dimension. You can see here that I've just uh, done some spatter. Okay, all I used was an old toothbrush head from an electric toothbrush, uh, just to give a bit of water spray and to do some of the uh, bubbles uh, for underwater for the shark coming up. So now you'll see that I'm just adding some more airbrush. What I've done is I've actually mixed some of the blue with some shading gray just to give it a bit of a blue hue to the shading gray and just airbrushed it in and then Basically, once I was happy with the whole illustration, I just painted in my white acrylic border. So, like I said at the beginning, I could see the pencil lines underneath. So, I'm just using them as a guide so I don't have to redraw the border and I can just paint it in with a brush straight away. For this, I was just using some white titanium acrylic and just applying a few coats to get that pure opaque white happening on the border. I decided to do a serrated border which I saw that in one of Struzan's indie pieces. It just gives that element of danger and sort of I guess a reflection of the shark's teeth and I thought it looked cool. In the original Jaws movie we had one victim at the start of the film. In Jaws 2 we had not one but two victims at the beginning of the film. Those victims being the two divers who found the orca boat from the first film. I felt like that little motif is what tells us we are watching the second film. So that's what I wanted to capture with my take on the movie poster. In fact, the director Juno Schwartz explains this motif in the extra features on the Jaws 2 DVD. I hope you enjoy this video of me bringing to life a poster of one of the classic sequel movies of all time.